All right, so in today's episode, I wanted to review the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. I'm gonna go and film down in the studio area, but um, I just wanted to stay out here and show you guys, this is pretty much what they look like. These are the polarized matte frame. Uh, I know that they make the glossy ones, which honestly I prefer, my regular Ray-Bans are glossy, but um, they don't make the glossy and polarized ones. So I ended up having to settle for, the, um, for these. Anyway, I wanted to do this review. I'm gonna show you guys some examples. I'm gonna show you guys or share with you guys what I think about them, my opinion on them. And um, yeah, so go ahead and check it out. We'll, uh, we'll get into it shortly. Say hi, Tiny. Where's Tank? I don't know, I think he went inside. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned outside today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be reviewing the Meta Ray-Ban glasses. I don't know if it's that's how you pronounce it or if it's the other way around. By the way, these are it, and let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, I want to get into the reason that, well, the reason I got them is because Sergio uh, bought them for me, so thank you, Sergio. But I but I was definitely checking them out as well, um, just because the first generation Ray-Bans that came out, the Meta Glasses, I wasn't a big fan of them. I didn't think that the quality in them was good enough to, you know, to be worthy of, of purchasing. So I waited to see what the second generations came out with, and I was very impressed with the newer ones but I hadn't played with them yet. So when Sergio gave them to me, I was very, very excited to play with them. I'm not gonna lie. So the only thing that I remember when he did give them to me is that he gave me the non-polarized ones. Now the non-polarized ones, the reason I'm bringing this out, look a lot more like the ones that I have my regular Ray-Bans. So these are the Wayfarers with the glossy frame. So obviously I do like the glossy frame. I think it does look a little bit better, but they don't make the glossy frame with the polarized lenses. So I did end up having to settle uh, for the matte ones, um, which is, it's not bad. I mean, I don't mind it, to be quite honest. It still looks really nice. It's just different than what I'm used to. So I got the matte polarized Wayfarer ones. And I know they also have the rounder ones, which are called the headliner. I'm not a huge fan of those. I think that these look more stylish. So I ended up going with these instead. And I think the reason that they appeal to me is because they are, you know, nice stylish sunglasses. They look pretty much the same as the ones that I normally wear, but they come with so much more. And let's go ahead and get into that. The very first thing, obviously this is a photography channel. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about is the photo and video aspect of it. And on the photo side, you get 12 megapixels, which is to me plenty. I don't think you really need too much more than that. You get pretty decent dynamic range. As you see in some of these photos, it's nothing that I would complain about. I think for, for what they are, they definitely are really, really good. Are newer iPhone photos better? Yeah, probably, I would imagine so. But you're talking about something that fits into sunglasses that you have with you all the time. So this is not, by the way, guys, I'm going to say a lot of very positive things about these glasses. And this is not a paid uh, sponsorship or anything like that. Like I said, they were a gift and they were also something that I probably would have picked up myself anyway. So take that into account. I'm not just talking good about them because I was given them. I'm talking good because I really do like everything about them. But... That being said, I do think that the photo quality from an iPhone 15, 14, 13 is probably going to be better. Even probably the 12. I have the 12 over here. But this is not something that I always have readily available to take photos or anything like that. Or, I mean, there's been some things that I've seen that, have, that were funny to me. And I'll just quickly take a photo of them where, you know, with your phone, you're going to have to get it out, put it into, you know, camera mode. I know it sounds silly, but it's just so much easier just going like that and keep keep it moving. And the video, honestly, the video is what I was most impressed with. The photos are nice, but the video quality, as you're seeing right now, we were shooting a proposal and the dynamic range was really nice. The colors were really nice. Everything about it, I was very thoroughly impressed because when I think of an iPhone video or I think of something that's not a mirrorless or professional camera you don't really think that it's going to give you that good quality and for what it was i mean it was really really good so as far as how wide it is i think it's about 24 millimeters something like that it's a pretty wide lens um with video it shoots 1080p at 60 frames you can't change that it stays at that um and the longest clip that you can film is 60 seconds which to me, I wish it would film a little bit longer, but I get it maybe for transfer times or um, there was somebody that said that maybe it could create heat if you're recording for too long. I guess I could see that, but hopefully there's a firmware update or something like that down the line that lets you record a little bit longer just because 60 seconds, I feel like it's a little short. It doesn't seem like it, but when you're recording, then you hear the little sound again that it just shut off. 
it's, you know, I'm like, damn, like, I wish it could keep going a little bit longer. It only shoots in vertical mode, which, yes, it's kind of annoying, but at the same time, these glasses were made by a social media company, Meta. So they want you to be posting on social media. Social media equals phones, generally speaking. So they did something that makes sense for their market. So I, I get it. Even though I don't like it, I do understand why they did it. Again, I'm sure they could have done it where, you, you know, you could shoot vertical or horizontal, but they chose to go with just vertical, I would imagine, for those purposes. Now, one thing when it goes, uh, you know, that I want to talk about when it comes to video is that the light is always going to be blinking when it's recording. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys an example of that. Um, so right there, it takes a second for them to turn on. So even like when I turn them on, it's going to sometimes there's a little delay, which is whatever. It's a little annoying, but it's not that bad. And then when I hold it, you see it right there. Now it's blinking, which is telling you that it's recording. I guess it's an it's an anti-creep mode. <laughs> so you can't be recording and people not know. But uh, which, I, you know, it's a good thing. So one thing I learned while I, while I was doing a little bit of research is that if you cover it, it won't start recording. But if you are recording and then you cover it, it will continue recording because it's going to be recording out of the left side. The right side is just the the light that lets you know that it's recording. The left side is actually where the camera is that records. I mean, I guess it would be a little weird, like, hey, walking up to someone to say, hey, what's going on? How are you? you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, it, it it's a dead giveaway that that you're covering something. Yeah, so don't be recording people and not letting them know. I think that's illegal anyway. Going off of that with the little light and um, recording or taking photos or anything like that. When you do take a photo, one thing that I did notice is that you'll click it and then it'll give you a sound like, a little beep and then another click that sounds like a shutter the photo isn't taken until that second click goes and there's always a little bit of a delay so you're going to hear a little beep and then click and then it takes it um when i first got them i thought it was automatic so i just went click and went like that and then the photo was just you know a blur it was just kind of you know whatever whatever was in between what i actually wanted to take and me walking away so you do have to remember click hold it and then when you hear that shutter then you know that the photo was taken so a little something to get used to uh, it's not the end of the world, but you know, that's, uh, that's what that is. Video is a little quicker. I press it and I hold it. And as soon as I hear click, it's pretty much recording right then and there. So I do like the video. I will say I do like video better than photo. I've been using these a lot more for videos than photo. And as far as video goes also, if you live stream, which I haven't done because I, I never do, I don't know. That's not really my forte, uh, that there is no limit. So you can live stream and that will keep going indefinitely. I haven't played with that because I also find it a little strange if I'm live streaming. I would have to look at my phone to see what people are saying to respond to them also. And then I'm just kind of looking at, I don't know. It just, it seems a little strange, but I, I haven't done it yet. But if you guys enjoy live streaming or anything like that, um, it will go unlimited. And as far as I know, the way that you do it is you'll open up Instagram. Instagram's what I'm going to go by. And then when you go to post a story, it's going to show you the little meta live or something like that. You know what? I'm going to test that out right now. Let's go. I'm not actually going to go live though. Cause I'm not, that's not my thing, but let's see Instagram. And now I heard it connecting. I mean, it, it kind of gave me a little bleep. Go to live. Oh, and there it is. So when you go to live, and I'll take a screenshot so you guys can see this. It says use smart glasses. So I can use the smart glasses to go live right there. Yeah, so that's how that works. Now I know. I won't be doing it, but now I know. That pretty much covers all the photo and video aspect of it, as far as I can think of. Um, dynamic range is pretty good when it comes to photo. I think it's even better when it comes to video. For some reason, it just to me, it just looks more rich and it looks more... Uh, like there is a wider range. It's probably the same as probably just in my head, but it, it, I do like the video aspect a little bit more. Again, there's a little bit of a delay when you click the photo. Um, so just make sure you, you hold still and remember that the camera's coming from the left side. So it is a little bit to the side, but um, yeah, overall, I mean, really, really impressed. I think that they did a really great job. Uh, I can't wait to see what the third generation is going to do. I think that it's, I would imagine it's going to add a little screen or something like that, like Google Glass, if you guys remember that back in like 2012. Uh, which would be interesting to really, really pull us away from reality. <laughs> but, um, but speaking of that, the next thing, the next aspect that I wanted to talk about is something that I, I didn't think I was going to be as excited about as I actually am. And I'm going to talk about it is the speaker function. So these sunglasses also have a little like headphone situation going on back here. Uh, it's spatial audio. So that way you can still hear what's going on around you, which is good because you don't want to be like one thing. Whenever I used to, and I'm, I say this, used to take my AirPods to go for a walk with my dogs, I always had just one AirPod 
in and I would leave the other one out because I want to be hearing what's going on. And ever since I got these, I haven't taken my AirPods at all when I go for a walk. You put them on, it connects to your phone and you can play podcasts, you can play music and play whatever. You can make phone calls with it. Uh, and it's just really, really handy. Now, if you're going into the store, obviously you take them off, don't be a douche. But generally speaking, I do really like the fact that I constantly have headphones with me that I, I don't have to think about because I wear my sunglasses every single day. And and is the audio perfect? No, of course not. It's It doesn't sound as good as something that you're going to wear inside your ear. Uh, it's not going to have as much bass. But for me, I'm not an audio engineer. I think that they're absolutely great. They're really, really good. They're better than what I expected. I'll tell you that. I thought they were going to sound like you were in a in an empty room, and they don't. They actually sound really, really good. Um, not as good as dedicated headphones, but definitely really good. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you can hear if you're walking down the street, you're going to be able to, other people are going to be able to hear you. Not to the degree like you're walking down the street with a boombox, and there I am making myself old again but you know they're not super super loud but they do make a little bit of noise you're gonna people can hear what you're listening to if you're listening to little john get low people are gonna know there's a party going on in your head so just keep that in mind you know if i don't think it's that big of a deal like if somebody was wearing these and i was in a in a restaurant waiting for food or something and they had them on and it was playing i wouldn't care you know what i mean like there's so many other noises that are going on that it, it wouldn't bother me but just so you guys know you can hear it even though it is very, very close to your ear. As far as phone calls go, from what I've been told, uh, they're good, not great. So, and not to the point, now I'll say this, and Scott, you're gonna hate me for saying this, but, but some of the, the, I think you had the Beats, Scott, one of my friends had the Beats uh, headphones, and they were atrocious when it came to how much crap you can hear in the background while you're trying to talk to somebody. So I remember every time Scott would call me, I would be like, can you, can you take those damn things off? Because I couldn't hear anything. I haven't gotten anybody to, like, to say, hey, I can't really hear or the audio is really bad, anything like that. They know I'm not on my phone with the phone to my head or AirPods, but, but it's never been something that's, that pulls attention like that, that it's that bad. So as far as I know, they're good. I use them every single day for phone calls. I use them every single day for headphones to you know when i go for a walk and the other thing is they also work like if you use siri for example you know when you say hey siri with these you can say hey meta and it'll listen to you and you can ask it what's the weather going to be like for the next few days and it'll tell you it'll say it out loud it can read text messages to you it can make phone calls so if i say hey meta call scott stockton it'll call that scott's my only friend evidently according to this video which is true pretty much and sergio my, <laughs> my bad sergio <laughs> um but uh, yeah, it's it's very handy. I don't use Siri because Siri is absolute garbage. Every time I say it, it uh, what's the weather like? The way that you make toast is by do. It's like no, that's not what I asked. With this, it's actually pretty accurate. Like I, I asked it what the weather was going to be like, and it told me the weather for the next three days. So it's really it's handy to have that. Now I wouldn't be using it like if I was in a somewhat public space. Like I'm only doing it when I'm by myself in the mountains, or you know what I'm saying, like far away from everybody. I don't want to be a douchebag but it, it works really well. Along with the audio, it also has volume control on the side. So you tap it and slide it, slide it back and forth. You can change the, the volume, which it's really nice because you can't see anything. And Dominic, uh, Dominic asked me if you can see the controls or if you can see the workings inside. And I'm looking at it right now and I'm even gonna try to look at it through to the light. You can't see anything, which is really, really like, you know, kudos to them to be able to hide all that because I don't see any of it, but I know that I'm turning the volume up and turning it down right over here. You can play the next track, you can play the previous track. Uh, so really, really well integrated. There is also a switch on the side over here on the inner inner arm where you can turn it on and turn it off. I never turn it off, turn it off to be quite honest because the battery life is, is really, really good. If I wear them all day, I'm listening to music, I'm making phone calls, all that, like I don't exhaust them that much. And then I always put them back in the case, which that's another thing is the case is the charging dock for it, basically. So as you as you guys are seeing that little green light, when you close them and then you slide them in. And now you know that they're charging. So generally speaking, I'm not exhausting them down to zero. So the battery life is always to me has been really, really good. The case charges with a USB-C, which is very standard nowadays to have those cords, so that's really handy. And the case, to be quite honest, is not that much bigger than the regular 
Ray-Ban case because this is the the one with my regular glasses it here's another I haven't used these glasses since I got these because I mean it's basically the same thing with a ton more options so yeah that you know just wanted to throw that in but as far as the case sizes they're pretty much the same thing um, these are obviously a little stiffer you can feel it this is a little softer but as far as size I mean it's negligible as far as the size difference the very last thing that I'm gonna mention is I forgot who asked me and they asked about how tight or how well they hold on to your head because obviously if you're doing any sort of sports or riding a skateboard or something like that i'm not doing that i'm 38 i'm not trying to break any bones but if you're doing any of that you want something that's going to hold on tight and i'm going to say this that's one thing that when i first got them i really really liked about the the meta ones because the regular ray bands i've dropped these a bunch of times just kind of like leaning forward they'll fall down and i tighten them all the time but they would fall forward. I think they might have made these a little bit tighter because they're a little bit heavier. Not significantly. They're really very negligible as far as weight, but they are a little bit heavier just because of the inner workings, you know, how much tech they put in sunglasses. So I think they made them tighter so they don't fall forward. And I really appreciate that because I never ever have to really readjust. They stay on your head really well. I know it's like a tiny little detail, but I figured I would mention it because it's something that I really like about them. And then as far as cost, um, as of this recording in January of 2024, uh, the polarized versions are 329 and the non-polarized versions are 299. I mean, I personally think it's well worth it. These, the original ones that I have, they were I think like 160, something like that for the polarized versions. And for just about double the price, I guess, you get something that does a hell of a lot more and they're exact, pretty much exactly the same thing as far as the style goes. So would I recommend them? Yeah, I would. If you're a photographer or videographer or anything like that, I think it's really, really great for content creation. As you guys are seeing in some of the videos right now, there's a bunch of behind the scenes things that I've been shooting with them and I'm not wearing it the entire time while I'm shooting. I, it's times where I know, okay, I'm gonna make a little reel out of this or I'm gonna post some behind the scenes for YouTube. I'll put them on and record for a little bit while I'm doing it so that my hands are free and I can do what I need to do. But it's, that's a really big thing is being able to use both your hands to do things while you're recording because you can say, hey, you can just record with your phone. Yes, absolutely, but you have one hand that you're doing everything with. When I put them on and I start recording, I just do, do whatever I need to do. And I'm, I don't think about my framing. I just go and do what I need to do because my head is pretty much following the action. If you're a content creator, I would definitely recommend them. I think that you would get a lot of use out of them. I think it's, it's a great little tool that you take with you every single day. And that way you don't have to think, should I bring my camera? You always have a camera with you in case you see something cool that you can share with your followers or your audience later on. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Um, have any of you bought the, the Meta glasses? How, are you thinking about it? Um, any other questions, anything that I missed, please let me know. And everyone who's subscribed, liked everything that we've been doing, I really appreciate you guys. And I'll be posting another one this week. Thank you guys. All right, so real quick, one thing that I forgot to mention is how you transfer from your sunglasses to your phone. So the way that you do it is you have the Meta app and then on that app, it's gonna ask you, usually it asks you like immediately after you record something, do you want to import this and you just click import it's going to take a minute it's going to transfer it over to the app and then from there it also transfers it over to your camera roll so that way it will always be available for you um it's just a little step just a little click but i forgot to mention it so i wanted to just throw that in there um yeah that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching